and then many also come together. Ah, I love that other person so much, I want to have a child with them. They get pregnant and soon after, they discover that that prince or princess was nothing like that. And then there's another little being in the world, living under a roof full of problems, with separated parents. Because you don't give time to anything. You want everything yesterday. You don't accept getting to know each other. You idealize. It's as if you imagine, what is the perfect match for you. Then you design that perfect pair. Then put aside all the qualities, none of the defects. No, the defect is not in the doll you are creating, it just has quality. Then you put the qualities there. Then when you find someone, you take that person and put them in there. It's that ideal you're expecting from that person. You don't look at the person, you look at the doll or doll that you idealized. Then when the person fits in there, those qualities all fall to the ground, you say, hey, but that's not what I imagined. Yes, because the other is real. Your doll is imaginary. You imagine, ah, I want a prince charming. I want an enchanted princess. There is no such thing, there are souls who make as many mistakes as you do. Living happily ever after requires a great deal of wisdom to make this maxim happen. So my brothers, rethink your relationships. The most important thing in love is respect. It's respecting others. You are not without flaw, you have a lot of flaws. How do you expect the other person to have no defects? So break these imaginary dolls. See real people in front of you. Real like you. That they may have the same errors, and other errors, in addition to yours. And then ask yourself, am I ready to accept that person with all their mistakes? Ah, but here I will leave a caveat. You've lived with that person enough to know how many mistakes they have. And this is important, she has already shown herself completely to you. Very good. So now, you know what you're taking home. Then you have to ask yourself, am I ready to accept all those defects? Ah, my love supplies everything. Oops. 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 Love doesn't supply anything. Because your love will wither if you don't agree with his flaws. Because you will fight, you will come into conflict and that quantum of love will decrease over time. It is not love that forgives mistakes. So ask yourself these questions. Look at your companions and analyze, do I accept him exactly as he is? This is a question. You will probably all say yes. Which is a lie, because you always try. Ah, so and so doesn't do it like that. He does it this way. You are always trying to change each other. Then there are those that are even worse, ah, after we get married, I'll change him or I'll change her. Why? Where do you think you are better than him or her at changing him or her? What are you, a feudal lord, a slave owner? What do you put the other in, the way you want? Because this is slavery, this is not love. So this story, that I'm going to get married and I'm going to change the other person, you're doing it completely wrong. And even more wrong those who allow themselves to be subjected. Because it's cancelling itself out, exactly like that case of passion. And then when you open your eyes, you will look back and see, how did I let myself be enslaved and submitted? This is a lack of self-love. No one has to submit to anyone, not even out of love. This is another point that you do not understand. Ah, for love I will give in. Give in. One day you will get tired of giving in, and you will see that it is not your giving in that made the other person change, that made the other person improve. Of course, I'll make an aside. There are certain things that a couple has to reach a consensus on. So they both have to give in, it's different. They are both giving in, for the common good of the relationship. Now when it happens, only one person always gives in, it's wrong. Because there is one who is forcing the other to give in, and the other is submitting, giving in. What kind of love is that? Ah, so as not to lose, I do everything he or she wants. Okay, 
where's your self-love? It's been gone a long time. You don't love yourself anymore. It's the same case with passion. You put that one on the pedestal and live for it. So you cancel yourself out for him or her and where are you? Then tomorrow that other person will end the relationship. And then you go and commit suicide, because you can't bear to live without the other, because your life was the other's life, it wasn't yours. You got lost in the context. The other one left. Where's the life? There is no more. You forgot it was your life, you lived someone else's life, and then you despair, get sick and even kill yourself, due to this passion. Yes, love interesting, isn't it? Interesting types of love. So now I'm also going to talk about the love of parents for their children. I already said it here, and many don't like it, I'm not worried about that, that you have to manage your children until they are 12 years old. In other words, you are shaping that human consciousness. But that human consciousness is a soul. It is not the product of the joining of the soul of the mother and father, it is not. He is another soul, with another walk. Which has nothing to do with the mother's walk, it has nothing to do with the father's journey. And then you start, no, because you're going to be what I want, you're going to be what I want, you're going to do what I want. Then that soul becomes totally submissive and rebellious, because she did not come into this world to be submissive to her parents. And there are many parents who make this their life goal, to control their son or daughter's life. No, I live for my son. You are you, your child is your child. So there's no such thing as living for your son. You played your part, until you were 12 years old. From then on, everything you taught, everything you shaped, is already duly registered in his memory, in his human consciousness. He will now follow his path. Raise individuals, not children. I already said this here. Whoever raises children is like a hen with her chicks under her wings. But the chicks grow up and leave. Animals know this. They take care of the puppies as long as they need them. And what have they been doing since they were little? They send the puppies to chase, to fight, to learn to live, because they will not stand by them. You do exactly the opposite, you want to overprotect your children, your puppies, so that they don't suffer. Ah, my son won't suffer. My daughter will not go through what I went through. Why not? What if it's her journey, going through what you went through? Then you go, put it in a glass jar, he puts it and then how do they learn to live? They don't learn, because you don't let them, you are there fooling their way. Ah, I'll do it. No, 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 this is bad for you. You have to do this. Because you believe that that is better for that soul. But that is another soul, not you. So how can you know what that soul wants? Stop controlling your children's souls. You have children up to the age of 12. From the age of 12 onwards, you start to have people at home living with you. Individuals, who continue to follow the rules of the house, continue to respect the wishes of their father and mother. I'm not saying otherwise, the house is yours. So, he or she has to respect the house rules, perfect. As if he were a perfect stranger. You have to make the values that you passed on to him or her count, perfect. Now the life decisions are not yours to make. It's from that teenager. Ah, but he's opting for something that won't lead to anything. You know, do you have a crystal ball, to know if that path he's choosing is bad for him? Or is it bad for you, within your concept? And that's where that individual begins to realize that if he makes mistakes, he will have the consequences. It's not every mistake they make, you go there and put sand. Because it's no use. What he did wrong, he will get back. It's not you putting it in a little jar, where the reaction won't come. But it will come in a much more intense way, because you yourselves are hindering the intensity of the reaction. While you are pouring sand over the problem, the problem out there is only getting worse. So when the lesson comes, it will come to knock you down. 
because you didn't let him take the lesson lightly. He did the stupid thing, there was no reaction, because you threw sand. But the reaction is accumulating. And every time he makes a mistake, you add sand, and the reaction builds up. One day, you won't be able to add sand anymore, and when that reaction comes, it will be drastic for him, and he will have learned nothing. So if your children, individuals make mistakes, feel it, and talk and say, everything you do has consequences. Do this, from a young age. This is the maxim you have to teach your children, that everything they do, good or bad, has consequences. It's a wall, hit and come back. Everything is like that. There is nothing you do that doesn't hit the wall and come back. So teach them from a young age. Wrong, reap the result of your wrong action. Don't put too much pressure on it, don't put sand in the problem, because he will think, ah, you see? I did something wrong, but my mother and father always find a way to get me out of my trouble. And he will grow up like this, thinking he can do everything because mom and dad always get him or her out of trouble. What human beings are you creating? What individuals are you creating? So, respect your teenagers. I'm not saying here that you have to be permissive. It's not that. I just said, they follow the rules, imposed in the house. Rules are rules. There's a time to leave, there's a time to come back. Very good. Very good. I want to know where it is. Very good. He still doesn't have the discernment to notice many problems. But it's up to you to guide him, show them that the world is not pink. That's what you try to do, show your children that, the world is pink, that there are no problems at all. No, the world is full of problems. So, from a young age, you have to show them where the dangers are. Because at this age, they start going out alone, going to parties alone, you won't be there, watching what they are doing. What you have to keep in mind is that you taught everything, and rest assured, they keep it. Because you taught. You prepared that individual, for life, for the dangers of the world. So it's not locked inside the house, you're protecting anyone. This is the purest, most wrong feeling of power that can exist. I have power in my son's life, no, you don't. Because he's going to become an adult, whether you want him to or not. That's what many don't understand. Children become adults, and be sure that the more you tolerate, the more he will want to free himself when he becomes an adult. And he will become an unbearable adult. Because you didn't let him live. You have covered up all his mistakes, so that he does not suffer. How beautiful. I repeat again, raise children until they are 12 years old. From there, create individuals to live in the world. They won't have you all their lives. So prepare them for the world, not yourselves. And don't want to decide their lives. As I just said, it's their life, not from you. They didn't want to impose on their children what you think is right. That is your opinion, it is not the path of that soul. That soul came with another road, another path, another profession. Don't impute to your children your desires, your frustrations, ah, so why couldn't you be, so my son will be. Why? If you can't be, that's your problem. It's his path, you don't have to force him to do anything, because you want to. He is already an individual, not a puppet in his hand. So don't make your children puppets. Make your children individuals, ready for the world, ready for the problems of the world, ready for disappointments, ready for the NOS. This is creating individuals. So my brothers, I think I managed to address practically everything, practically all forms of love. So I would like each of you to think about it. If you are following something I said, change it. The first love you have to have is yourself. Love each other first always, then comes your partner, then comes the child, then comes the mother, then comes the father. You have to love yourself, first and foremost always. So love each other, respect each other, 
don't let yourself be subjected. But also don't do to others what you wouldn't want them to do to you. I am Archangel Michael. I am here ready to help each one of you on this journey. I hope I'm succeeding.